Rocky Blyer was a 16th round draft choice out of Notre Dame in 1968. He played one season with the Pittsburgh Steelers, then was drafted and sent to Vietnam, where he became the only player in the NFL to be wounded in the Vietnam War. Although the Veterans Administration classified him as 40% disabled, he returned to the Steelers and became an authentic hero, worthy of our admiration, both for what he did on the field and for what he had to conquer to get the opportunity. As long as football remains a game of heart as well as speed and muscle, the dramatic story of Rocky Blyer will never be forgotten. As a halfback for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Rocky Blyer, number 20, helped his team win four world championships. But his toughest battle was fought in a distant arena, far from the cheering crowds of the NFL. In the rice paddies of Vietnam, Rocky Blyer learned that a real battlefield has no champions, only survivors. A machine gun, you could hear it in the distance, started to level the area. And all of a sudden, I felt a thud in my left leg. And as I looked down, I, uh, I saw two neat little holes uh, in, in my uh, khakis. And then I could hear the, the guys hollering in the, in, the, in the wooded area, you know, there's one, you know, watch it. Boy, they got Bill. Watch that one. Watch the you know, Holy Christ, what's going on? They're everywhere. Now the helicopter comes in, the gunships come in, and they strafe the area with uh, rockets. Uh, the company medics now run around as best as he can. He gets hit. Radio man gets shot through the throat, and so he's out of action. We didn't know what we ran into, and so we set up a defensive position. So our commanding officer, Tom, was only about maybe six feet from me, and he was out looking over the top of the ledge to see what was out there. And all of a sudden, just out of the corner of my eye, I saw this grenade come flying through the air, and it hit him right on the back, and it bounced off of him. It was almost like slow motion. And that grenade just kind of kept rolling right where it was. And in a matter of seconds, I had to decide which way to jump. And I went flying forward. And the grenade went off. Boom! Oh, I got dizzy and blacked out for for a minute, and uh, and it had blown out this way. Fortunately for me, because if it had blown up this way, I mean I might not be sitting here talking to you at this point. Um, and so I caught some um, coming up through my right foot. Blyer spent six weeks in a Japanese hospital, dreaming of a future the doctors told him he would never have. So I said, well, Doc, I mean, my biggest concern is that I'd like to get back and play. And he said, at this time, what's your prognosis? And he said, well, in all honesty, Rock, uh, seeing the damage that has been done, he said, uh, the ability to run is, is gone. I mean, you will not play professional football again. In the late autumn of 1969, Rocky returned to Pittsburgh. His foot was stitched and scarred, but his spirit was unmarked. I didn't want to get to a place in the future and say, you know, maybe I could. Maybe I could have if I would have. Maybe if I tried, I might have been able to play. I liked playing football. I liked what football gave me. At least I wanted to give it a shot. And so that if I got to the point and didn't make it, I never had to look back and say I didn't try. I would spend hours in that weight room just lifting, lifting, lifting until I could finally start running again. In 1970, Blyer reported to the Steelers training camp, but his future in football looked bleak. Rocky was so beat up that when he first tried to run up the, and down the field, you could just see that every step hurt him. And, you know, my thoughts then, I said, boy, why is this guy even trying to play this game? Because, you know, he's going to hurt himself worse. He's, uh, you know, he's just never going to be able to succeed. No one thought Rocky would make the team. 
Certainly not Chuck Noll, the new head coach. There was no way Rocky could play, you know, in my view. In fact, I asked him at one stage to, uh, you know, I thought maybe it would be better if he had retired. Uh, I was crushed. I remember leaving practice and was driving up to, to Green Tree where I had a, an apartment. I mean, tears were coming down my eyes. My world had just caved in. I, was, I, I did feel like there was no hope left. And it was something I couldn't control. I mean, maybe I would have felt better if, you know, if I gave it my best shot and, and, and I had control over it. But I couldn't control because uh, because the foot didn't react the way I wanted to. Tony Parisi, our equipment manager, after talking with Ralph Berlin, our trainer, came to, uh, came to me and he said, uh, listen, he said, you really have to do something. He said about this Rocky Blower. He said, this kid is just killing himself. He said, he's not going to say anything to anybody. He says, but he's just suffering so much. He said, I, he's come to me at night and asked me to remake his shoe. He said, I put a special thing under his uh, in step, but he has nothing but scar tissue there. And uh, he said, it's just the most agonizing thing. He said, that kid cannot go through what he's doing. So the, what we really did was put uh, Rocky on the injured reserve list, sent him to the doctors, and when our doctors operated on him, they actually found a piece of shrapnel in his foot that, uh, that had, was not able to be taken out at the time, and they removed the scar tissue. And uh, then the story, of course, is legendary, what Rocky did after that. The next year he comes back and he's still not 100%, but he's able to run a little better. You can see a little bit of improvement. I still wouldn't have given him a nickel for his chances of ever succeeding. The following year he comes back, I mean, it was just phenomenal. The rate of improvement and how he had just conquered all odds. In 1974, after five years of rehabilitation, Blyer won a spot in the starting lineup and a place in the hearts of football fans everywhere. Everyone was inspired by the gutty young man whose hard work had made a dream come true. straight-ahead will and determination put him squarely in the tradition of men who have been at the heart of winning teams. In each of his five years as a regular, the Steelers won the division championship. And in 1976, Rocky became only the fifth player in NFL history to gain 1,000 yards in a season after reaching the age of 30. field of human endeavor, whether it be art, science, or sports, we are apt to find at least one person who serves as an example of the triumph of the spirit. In this figure, we are able to find a measure of our own possibilities, instead of a reminder of our limitations. The NFL has its example. His name is Rocky Blyer.